Today's question, have we got worse? I think we means the West, at thinking for ourselves compared to 50 years ago. The short answer is our thinking today is more elaborate and more complex, but less free. So if the question is, have we got worse at thinking for ourselves relative to the 50s or to the 70s? The answer is um, yes, but this is not a permanent deterioration. This is a matter of how moments of cultural moment come and go. And we might well have a different answer in 2050. Every time a conversation like this one is had, though, you've got to have that warning up on your wall that humans tend to over romanticize um, the past. In particular, humans tend to over romanticize the relatively uh, recent past. I mean, nobody's going around saying things were really good in ancient Greece, guys, come on. I mean, the way they blended, you know, their the fig wine with the water, I mean, it was incredible. Uh, look, at, look at where we are now. No, but people go back a few decades, typically. So what on earth is going on if we've got worse at thinking for ourselves? When you invite me into the room, and let's put a label on that room, let's call that room having thoughts about your thoughts, or thinking about what you think. And my reaction is that I either find it unbearable to go into that room, or I find it um, inconvenient to go into that room. It just does not advantage me to go into that room, right? If I have either of these two responses, I'm no longer thinking for myself. If I'm angry, I can come into that room and I can say, well, you've brought me in here. Why the hell did you bring me in here? Yes, I am here. I am seeing all the things in this room and I don't like it here. Goodbye. That is different to not being able to bear to be in that room. You know, where you come in and you can't bear engaging with what's there. Um, if I'm angry, I can say, well, there was this kind of cupboard there. I hated seeing it, but it had three shelves. It has a bit of made of glass and one of the shelves had a key. Right. But if I can't bear being in that room, I can't bear to look at this. It's like, oh, um, that's one response. The other response is it's just massively inconvenient because my online persona or my online profile, as one um, philosopher with a prominent YouTube channel puts it, um, is incompatible with reckoning with what's in that room. And here is what's interesting. If I don't come into that room for a very long time because it's inconvenient, right? eventually it might become unbearable because I would then have to uh, reckon with the fact that it is inconvenience that caused me not to come into this room. And that might be a reality I, I cannot face. So where's the modern source of this? Um, not being able to bear and not finding uh, convenient and then not finding it possible to bear the convenience, inconvenience origins of one's incapacity to come into the room. Where does this come from? It comes um, largely from modern identity politics. So let me give a, this is a pure kind of cartoon. Um, if in the ancient world, or at least according to how, let us say, Aristotle might see the world, um, you tell me that something is wrong with my views and also something is wrong with how I'm arriving at my views. That is um, an opportunity for me to develop my character. You're speaking to my character and how it could be improved. In 2023, you're attacking my identity. And potentially erasing me, erasing how I think about myself, right? Um, so my reaction is, by asking me to come into that room, you're asking me to not exist. So 
the micro takeaway here is be watchful in yourself and in others of this extraordinary incapacity to bear having thoughts about your own thoughts.